Hi, welcome back to DNA and from OCR Biology. This is part three, all about coding for polypeptides. Uh, so we're going to review uh, what the nature of the genetic code is, and then we're going to recap again on transcription and translation of genes. Again, for many of you, you might have already covered this um, at GCSE in Triple Science, uh, but it bears repeating. It's one of the concepts that students often find challenging, and it's a sort of a lengthy process we need to recap on. Let's think about genes and uh, polypeptides first of all. So genes are a section of DNA. Yeah? DNA, remember, is a really long molecule, so we're interested in looking at individual sections. And what we now know is that genes code for a particular polypeptide. What's a polypeptide? Lots of amino acids joined together in a chain. And often more than one of those chains will be joined together to make a protein. Now, proteins are really important. Um, large proportions of an organism are protein. If you think about the dry mass, in other words, how uh, an organism with all its water removed, about 75% of it is protein. And the polypeptide is really important. And let's just think about that a moment. Uh, before we go on to looking at the cytoplasm, let's think about the what we call protein structure. Now this is gonna come up again in your uh, unit for biochemistry, but there are four particular layers of protein structure, what we call primary structure. So that's the sequence of amino acids in a chain. In other words, what order the amino acids go in. Secondary structure, the, that sequence of amino acids causes certain types of folding. Um, and it's how that folds up, sometimes in what we call beta pleated sheets or alpha helices, but the way that they fold together is secondary structure. Tertiary structure is when the side groups of amino acids, the R groups, chemically joined to each other, again, causing further folding of the uh, protein. And then you have quaternary structure, which is where different polypeptide chains can associate together. Hemoglobin is a classic example that's given here. I'm aware I've skated over that quite quickly, but this is going to come up again when we look at biochemistry. So, uh, your genetic code. Well, again, we've shown an edited version here of a gene. Genes, sometimes referred to as cistrons, are the things that code for a specific polypeptide. In other words, a specific sequence of amino acids that makes up um, a part of a protein. So polypeptides are made from amino acids, lots of amino acids joined together. So we need a sequence of code to say which order are we going to put those amino acids in, in place. And the, the genetic code is referred to as something called being universal. In other words, the sequence of bases that, that is there can be for any, the same for any organism. So it doesn't matter whether it's in a cat, a rat, a human, if you have that particular sequence of amino acid, the bases rather, it will code for that particular amino acid. Now, we now understand that um, DNA is uh, of what we call a triplet code and if you think about it there are 20 amino acids that need to be coded for now with four letters a c g and t if you only have one letter per amino acid that's not enough to provide 20 yeah you've only got four possible combinations with two bases coding for uh, a particular amino acid you've still only got 16 combinations yeah a with a a t with t g, c with c g with g and etc etc but only 16 possible combinations in each order if you think about three possible combinations however that gives 64 yeah four bases four by four by four there's 64 possible combinations of sequences and that's sufficient to allow for 20 amino acids plus some overlap yeah in other words they, they use the word degenerate but what that actually means is there can be more than one code uh, for the same amino acid Let's look at some examples. Um, ooh, I'm going to skip over a couple of pages a second. Ooh, I thought that was further up. There we go. There it is. Um, methionine is one we want to talk about. AUG is one that's the only code for methionine. And that also codes for the starting of a particular amino acid. Uh, if we look at um, asparagine, for however, AAU and AAC are both code 
for the same thing. So it doesn't matter whether you have AAU or AAC, they'll both code for a particular um, amino acid. Lysine, similarly, AAA and AAG. Uh, valine has more. Yeah, so some of them have two possible sets of combinations, some have four, a couple of them only have one. So it's not consistent for every amino acid that they have two sequences of three or three sequences of three. It's a little bit random as to which one you look at. There's also a stop codon when um, you provide that particular one, uh, if those particular sequences, it marks the stopping of a construction. Let's skip back now just to see what we were talking about. Uh, there we go, we were talking about uh, it being universal, we talked about the triplet code, and uh, let's think about transcription and translation. So, recap again, we've got um, information stored in the DNA in the nucleus of the cell. We've got to get that information out of the nucleus to where protein synthesis occurs. And remember, the protein synthesis occurs on ribosomes. So, you've got to get the information from the DNA out to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm. The only way of doing that is using RNA, messenger RNA. Now, um, producing messenger RNA is something called transcription. Yeah, they, remember we talked in our previous videos about copying the DNA where sections unwind and then it makes a copy of one strand. The process is exactly the same for producing mRNA. You get a, a section of the DNA unwinding, the section that is going to code for that particular protein. It unwinds, the hydrogen bonds break, and then you get enzymes moving along to encourage a particular messenger RNA strand to form. Now remember, messenger RNA is only single-stranded, uh, and that kind of makes sense. If it's making a copy of one of the strands, um, it will have ribose instead of deoxyribose, just a subtle difference in the pentose sugar. And again, the base pairs, if you've got thymine, you will be replaced with uracil. So when we look at this sort of sequence here, um, A will pair with U, A will be with U, and T with A. So you're getting uracil in the place of T in all of these chains. Now, notice that we've got what we call a coding strand and a template strand. The coding strand, this sequence is the same as the sequence over here, except for the fact that the T's have been replaced with U. So where it has A, T, G, T, we've got A, U, G, U. Yeah, so this is the same sort of sequence. So the coding strand, and the mRNA strand will have the same sequence of bases, except for the fact that T and U have sort of uh, been replaced. But this is the opposite. This is the template on, on which this messenger RNA forms. So coding strand, the messenger RNA will have the same code sequence as that. The template strand, this is the strand which on which the messenger RNA forms. So during transcription or copying, remember transcribing is making a copy. Think of ancient monks writing out copies of books. That's transcribing. This is no different. It's making a copy or a transcription of something. You get um, base pairing, as we've just said. Uh, and let's think about the fact that uh, with the mess one strand, you get the opposite. Uh, remember, it's, it's talking about something being overlapping or non-overlapping, rather. Yeah. You, you get sequence of three, sequence of three, sequence of three. There's no sort of overlap here to here. Yeah, DNA, TAC, while the opposite strand is AUG. So if this is our uh, template strand, uh, then the messenger RNA forms as a sort of a, uh, the opposite, if you like, on, on it. Yeah, so you get an exact copy of the coding strand, substituting T for U. But otherwise, this is the sort of if you like the matching pair on which it forms because it's an acts as a template. It fits against it and acts as a template. Well, we've looked at that already. So once we've got our messenger RNA formed, then we get transcription. The transcription happening. That it moves out the nucleus through the nuclear pore. Remember, there's a nuclear envelope, a double layer of membrane with pores in between, and the pores are there so that messenger RNA can move out of the pore and go out to the ribosomes where the translation <laughs> it's always easy to get those two mixed up, translation occurs. And the ribosomes are the site of where translation occurs. Um, they can be free in the cytoplasm, 
but remember that many of them obviously are also attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, yeah? So ribosomes. The ribosomes, if you like, are where the messenger RNA fits onto so that uh, it can, the it, ribosome will move along the messenger RNA strand. And as it moves along, it reads the sequences of three. And this process of the ribosome moving along, reading the sequence of three is translation. Yeah. Now, uh, there needs to be something that brings in, however, the amino acids. This is the code, but the code is saying, put this a particular amino acid here. Put this particular amino acid here. So we also need transfer RNA to bring in the amino acids. Now, this looks a little bit like a funny clover leaf, if you like, sometimes described as that. Um, you've got the amino acid attachment site. So one side is the amino acid attachment site. In other words, an amino acid will fit here. And then you've got the anti-codon, the opposite sort of uh, to the codon. Yeah, they are complementary to the codon. So the, the anti-codon is AUG. The codon, obviously, is the opposite UAC. Remembering U pairs with A rather than T in uh, RNA. So what happens in translation? Transfer RNA molecules attach to the ribosome. The anticodons and the codons will match up. Yeah, so you've got a matching set there. Here's your codon, here's your anticodon. So the, that anticodon is saying, bring in this particular amino acid, which is in this case methionine, one which will start the chain off. Yeah, then the, it moves along and reads the next sequence. So that you've got the next sequence of three red and so on and so on. So it's going to bring in cysteine and then cysteine again and ASN. No, no idea off the top of my head, uh, but it doesn't really matter about the name of the amino acid, just the fact that there is a different amino acid. And it says put this amino acid here. So this is primary protein structure, bringing in a particular amino acid, making them bond together to form a polypeptide chain. The bond that forms between one of these and the next is a peptide bond. So hence the name polypeptide. Yeah, you've got multiple peptide bonds forming between each amino acid. Yeah, so one amino acid joined to another, peptide bonds. So here comes the polypeptide. And at that point, you then end up with a complete poly, um, polypeptide chain. Now, remember, multiple ribosomes can attach to the same messenger RNA. Sometimes they're described as a polyzone because lots of them will be reading off at the same time, each of which is making a polypeptide chain. So you can get more than one ribosome attaching to the same messenger RNA molecule to produce a polypeptide chain. Once the polypeptide has been made, then you get folding and so on. Um, here's a good YouTube animation. It's only short, about a couple of uh, minutes long. Uh, it's a good animation which just kind of outlines the whole process, just gives you a vision of what the, it looks like in animated form. Okay, a good idea or something you need to think about doing is comparing DNA and RNA. So in other words, what are the differences and similarities between DNA and RNA and the three different types of transfer R of RNA, rather, so excuse me, transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA, messenger RNA. What are they and what are their functions? Happy summarising. I think that concludes our video for today. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, we That's the end of D DNA for now. And we're going to move on to looking at, um, oh, I think it is uh, mitosis and meiosis and so on. So it's a cell cycle. So there's lots more to come. Okay. Thanks for listening.